Good morning, friends. We are learning our subject that is data mining. The code is three one six zero seven one four. And in that, we are learning second module that is data pre-processing. We know that in the real world, data is dirty, noisy, and incomplete. So we need to have pre-processing. So what we have learned in the previous lecture, for that we can see we have learned that we should fill in the missing values, identify outliers, and smooth out the noisy data and correct the inconsistent data. So how to handle the noisy data? Let us see that. Binning. Binning is the process of transforming numerical variables into categorical counterparts. An example is to bin values for age into categories such as 20 to 39, 40 to 59, 60 to 79. See what it says if we are having the ages. Let us consider the age of the faculties of our college and students. So there we can say the ages can be 20, 21. You can say 40. 30, 39, right? You can say 60, 61, right? 70, something like this ages we can find for our college faculties and students, right? So, so they are, they are there in the numerical variables, right? They are the numerical variables. What do we want is? We want to make them categorical. For that, what we will do is, we'll have the range. We will decide the range. That is, say, 20 to 39, 40 to 59, and 60 to 79. For that, we can say, this is young, this is middle age, and this is senior citizen, right? Or old. So what we have done is, this binning is the process of transforming numerical variables into categorical counterparts. You can say what we have done in that. See, after that, instead of saying the ages in numerics, like, like what do we say? Say 20, 21, 22. Instead of that, we will be having the name. Category name that is, you can say for this one, we'll say it as young, for this, we say it is as middle age, and for this, we say it as the old, right? Okay, numerical variables are usually discretized. Discretized, we know that continuous values are being discretized, right? And this is one way. That is, we are doing the discretization. So are we learning that? No, I mean to say that this is also one way that discretization also is one way of doing the binning, right? Binning does discretization as well as it is useful for, for smoothing the data, right? Okay. So... What do we say is numerical variables are usually discretized in the modeling methods based on frequency tables. So what we have to do is for that, first of all, sort data and partition into equal frequency bins. Now what are they? We will see with the example. But the thing is, first of all, we have to sort the data. Then we have to partition it into 
equal frequency beams right that means the numbers what we are putting inside one beam or you can say bucket right you people are aware of the bucket right so that is what but here we'll consider it as bean wherein will be putting few numbers and those numbers will be same same in the way that count count is same for all the beans and that is called the equal frequency beans then one can smooth when the noisy data is there we have to smooth the data right so one can smooth it by means whose means means of whole data no by bean means whatever numbers you have put inside the bean we have to take the mean of that and with that we can replace the noisy data right smooth by beans median and smooth by beans boundaries etc that is this is this is means beaning algorithm is useful one is for handling noisy data that means for smoothing the data also it is useful for discretization right regression that is one more method what it says regression is a data mining function that predicts a number age weight distance temperature income or cells could be predicted using regression techniques for example a regression model could be used to predict children's height given their age weight and other factors smooth by fitting the data into regression functions like we can say we are having x and y coordinates let me show you that here let's say that we are having x y axis we are having say x y axis this is x we can say and here we are having say y axis right we know that now whatever data we are having that is say if it is fitting in this particular line x uh, second let me say that it is this particular data right this is our x and y axis and here is the data being plotted fine so what we do is this is x axis this is y axis and say this is our data plot whatever data we are having fine now if we have a known x if we have a known x can we find the value of y obviously yes how we can do that that is using y is equal to mx plus c right that equation is are with us right okay so let us say that here for this particular line if we are having the intercept at this particular point now what do we say we can have the c also we can say with whatever data points we are given with that we can find the m and c and with the equation let us say that equation is say y is equal to 2x plus 3 let us say with the data we are able to get this particular equation now what happens that for any unknown value of x let's say x is 5 and we find y obviously yes we just have to put it in this particular equation that is 2 multiply by 5 plus 3 so 10 plus 3 that is equal to 13 right something like this we used to do isn't it in our school days we used to do all these things 
isn't it so is it the same here no it is not so what we are doing here here we would like to say that here say we are having few data say this side we are having some data and here also we are having some data what will be there that is we'll try to find a line which is able to fit almost all the points i'm not saying that which is passing by all the points what i'm saying is which is trying to fit almost all the points right and from that we'll find such equation that is line equation and then after we'll be able to give the value of x and find the value of y that is what is linear regression this is only introduction we'll see that in detail right so no worries so that's what we have seen then after we can say that clustering that is also useful to smooth the noisy data detect and remove the outliers clustering can be useful to remove the outliers combine computer and human inspection detect suspicious values and check by human that is also possible to deal with the outliers fine now we would like to know beaning methods for data smoothing right what we want to do that we want to have equal frequency beams right that is what we have talked up so we'll see that first of all beaming method right it's example is almost every times asked in the paper it is being used in the practical exam also for implementation right okay so let us see the data is given here the data is given in the sorted order only you can say sorted means do we have to ascend it or descend it or anything will do no we have to ascend only that is sort the data in ascending order fine so here you can say sorted data in ascending order is already given fine if it is not given we have to sort it right okay so 4 8 9 15 21 21 24 25 26 28 29 34 how many are there let me count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 okay 12 total data are given to us right fine now partition into equal frequency bins okay we want to divide this data into equal frequency bins means what means we will put equal number of data in that particular partition let us say that for this example number of bins given is 3 bin 1 bin 2 bin 3 we want to divide this data into three bins okay it is specified in the problem statement so no need to worry so three bins right now how many numbers we can put in those bins total number of data is 12 right total number of data is 12 12 divided by 3 because three bins we want to have so how many will be there Four, right? Twelve divided by three number of bins. So four numbers we can put in one bin, right? So what we'll do? This four, four numbers. Does it mean that only four will be there? No. We mean to say that four numbers. So this is four, eight, nine, fifteen. Total four is there. Total is not sum, right? count 1 
three, four, right? Count. We are talking of count. Those four numbers will be putting in bin one. Again, four numbers, 21, 21. You can say two times 21. Yes, because it is there in the data. So you should not ignore, right? It is same data. We should ignore it. No. 21, 21, 24, 25. So that's what we are putting here, right? After that, 26, 28, 29, 34, right? So that will put in the bean 3. Very simple example, right? The data is given. Check whether it is there in ascending order or not. If it is not, sort it in the ascending order. After that, what do we want to have is, we are using the beaning method, but that is equal frequency. You should see the name, okay? Equal frequency or equidapt, because other method two is there. So equal frequency or equidapt, for that we have to count how many numbers we should put. So for this example, it is given that 12 data is given and the number of beans in which we want to partition the data that is equal to 3. So what we will do, that is in bean 1, we'll put 4 numbers. Then 4 numbers and remaining 4 will be putting here. It may happen that the data whatever is given, that is a count of that is say 13. Then what will you do? 13 means 4 here, 4 here, 4 here. What about the 13th one? What to do? For that, you can consider it as the 13 divided by 3. So that will be what? 4 point something, right? So you can consider it as either 4 or 5, right? So in this, you may consider phi data, then again you will consider phi data and remaining one you will put here, right? You can do that, right? Because such examples are also many times asked. What you are considering, that only you should write, right? Okay. So smoothing by beans. Now what we should do is smoothing by bean means, right? People are making mistake in such examples that they are taking the mean of whole data. That is totally wrong, right? What we have to do is smoothing by bean means. So we should take the mean of a particular bean and with that only we should replace. Fine. Okay. So replace all values in a bean by one value. And what is that value? That is the mean. Mean of a particular bean. Okay. Not of whole data. Okay. So take care of it for bean 1. What should be the mean? Let us say that mean will be this 4 plus 8 plus 9 plus 15 divided by 4. So that's what we have written. 4 plus 8 plus 9 plus 15 divided by 4. So that is 9, right? So what we'll do is we'll replace the values inside bean by 9. 9, 9, 9, 9. Fine. Bean 2. For that, we are having 21, 21, 24, 25. So what we'll do? Find the mean. 21 plus 21 plus 24 plus 25 divided by 4 and that is equal to 23. So what we'll do for bean 2, we'll smooth the data by 23, comma 23, comma 23, comma 23. What about the third bean? It is 26, 28, 29, 34. So take the mean of it. 26 plus 28 plus 29 plus 34 divided by 4, that is 29. And so in bin 3, we'll be having the data that is 29, comma 29, comma 29, comma 29. Now see, smart people will say, 
will directly smooth the bean and will write the data as 9,9,9,9. 23 comma 23 comma 23 comma 23 and 29 comma 29 comma 29 comma 29 no don't do so right show this particular thing that is you are finding the mean of it right this procedure this steps you should display right to get full marks okay otherwise people may say that you have copied from somebody else and you do not know right that is the case so take care of it always show the procedure fine now smoothing by bean median so what happens that replaces all values in a bean by one value right that is median what we have done before that was we have replaced all the values by bean mean now what we'll be doing is we'll be replacing the value by bean median right what is median mm, when odd number of data is there at that time it is the middle value and when even number of data is there we have to take the average of two middle values right just to recall fine okay so for this particular bean what is that middle values that is 8 and 9, right? For bean 1, middle values are 8 and 9. Because even number of data is there. 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Okay. So 8 plus 9 divided by 2, that is our median of bean 1. Show the procedure that you have found the median, right? And what you can do is we can replace the value with 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5. Now see, in few examples, when you will see, you will find it as value 8 or value 9. Why it is so? You require integer only for that particular application. Then you cannot take it as 8.5, but you will have to take it as either 8 or you can say 9 right so based on your application you have to justify you have to write that your integer is required so we are taking it as eight and when you are taking nine there also you can specify that if it is eight point six or seven you can approximate it to nine right so that is what is required only when a data is in integer only required for application see here also the data which was given that was in integer but there the application did not require it to have it in integer so we have returned it as 8.5 fine and if it is required or in the problem statement, if it is specified that you have to give the bean or you have to smooth the data with integer values only, then you should consider it as something like this. Fine. So this part is only required if we require in the application or if it is being specifically given in the problem statement so before calculating the sum for bini read the statement properly that what you want to do fine okay so that is for bean one second is for bean two for that we can say the median is say 21 plus 24 divided by 2 we do have the bean data that is 21 plus 24 is in the middle so we have to take the average of it and that is what is our median fine same is the case for our bean 3 right whatever we are getting as the median with that will replace all the data values fine so here also it is 28.5 and we have replaced all the data fine if we require or if it is mentioned in the problem statement 
to have integer only what will do that is will convert this smoothing by the integer equivalent of those numbers right so we can put it here fine very simple example very easy to implement also but it is it is to be taken care of that you are taking the mean median of particular bean only right now the third way of smoothing by bean that is by bean boundaries now what is that let me show you that in words then after i'll explain you with the numerical example fine so for that what do we say is so left and right boundaries are say data lb and rb see such words you will not find anywhere but if i explain you with this you can understand that very easily right so let us say that left data is lb and right data in the bean okay not in the whole data that is lb and rb now what to do is find the relation between data minus lb and rb minus data lb is left data that is left boundary data and rb is right boundary data right what we'll do is data minus lb why why because lb is smaller right and rb is bigger one right so rb minus data so find this then find the relation between them that is replace the data by boundary value to which the data is nearer that means we can say if the mode value of data minus lb is less than rb minus data mode value then then we should replace the data with lb if this distance with the data with left boundary is less then we should replace that with left boundary otherwise replace with the right boundary right so let us see the example you can understand that very easily here for bean say 4 8 9 15 what is lb and what is rb lb is equal to 4 and rb is equal to 15 this is left boundary right for this particular bean this is left boundary 4 and rb 15 is the right boundary fine okay now what we have to do is for the data that is other than left and right boundary fine so we should consider 8 minus 4 mode of that and 15 minus 8 right the way we are taking data minus lb and rb minus data fine so this is 4 and this is 7 now what do we say is 4 is less than 7 so we have to replace 8 with 4 that is the left boundary right so replace 8 by lb is equal to 4 what about the data 9 9 minus 4 that is equal to 5 and 15 minus 9 that is equal to 6 so 5 is less than 6 and so we can say replace 9 by lb is equal to 4 right very simple example and so we'll be able to smooth bean 1 by 4 that was the left boundary then you can say 8 replace with 4 9 replace with 4 and 15 is right boundary so put it as it is left boundary and right boundaries are put same and whatever are the middle values those will be found 
the relation with the left boundary and right boundary whichever is less that will be replaced right with that particular boundary value the data will be replaced fine very simple example one more that is we are having three bins right so we can say this one was for bin 2 we can say 21 21 24 25 so lb is 21 left boundary and right boundary is 25 so what do we do is for data 21 you can say 521 we have considered as boundary but the thing is here we are having 21 as the inner value also right so we'll do 21 minus 21 as 0 and 25 that is a right boundary minus the data that is equal to 4. So 0 is less than 4 and so we'll replace 21 by the LB that is the 21. For data 24, 24 minus 21 that is equal to 3 and 24 minus, sorry, 25 minus 24, that is equal to 1. Here, 3 is greater than 1. That is, distance with the left boundary is greater than the distance with the right boundary. So, we'll replace the data by right boundary. So, that is equal to 25. Very simple. And so smooth the bean 2 as 21, 21, 25, and 25. Right? For bean 3, what do we consider? That is 26, 28, 29, 34. So left boundary is 26, right boundary is 34. And now we have to find the distance of data with left boundary and right boundary, right? So for that, we can say 28 minus 26 and 34 minus 28. So 2 is less than 6. So replace 28 by LB that is equal to 26. For data 29, 29 minus 26 is 3, which is less than 34 minus 29, that is equal to 5. So replace 29 by LB is equal to 26. Why? Because 3, that is the distance with left boundary, is less than the distance with right boundary which is 5, right? So, we'll replace that value with 26. That is the left boundary. And so, the smooth bean 3 will be 26, 26, 26, and 34, right? Very simple example, fine? Now, next one is clustering. What is it? It is a process of partitioning the data into a set of meaningful subclasses called clusters. The clusters are created based on similarity as for example centroid and diameter. It helps users understand the natural grouping or structure in a data set. It does not have predefined classes. Okay. It can be very effective if data is clustered, but not if the data is spread. What do we mean by that? I'll show you. And for that, one algorithm is key means clustering algorithm. 
you can say ma'am clustering comes later why are you teaching just now see this is one of the smoothing method right what we are learning just now we are learning how to handle the noisy data in that we can say that we are using binning method to smooth the data clustering is also useful for smoothing the data how it smooths the data what it does that is it it divides the data into meaningful subclasses right okay so so we are looking at the clustering here fine okay so let me show you the k means clustering algorithm what is there in that k means clustering aims to partition and observations into k clusters for example for your class say 60 students are there we divide them in say three clusters where we can say that one cluster is based on your marks see all are based on the marks that is the similarity measure we want to find among your students so what do you do similarity measure or many times it is being considered as the distance right we want to find the distance between you people so what do you do for that you can say only one coordinate is given that is the marks it can be two coordinates like x and y it can be more than that right so just now say we are having only one coordinate that is marks and we want to divide you students in say three clusters so what do you do that is you can say um 50 to 60 one group is there where the marks or percentage is in 50 to 60 let us put them in one cluster that is one group people who are having the marks from 60 to 70 they are put in the second cluster and people who are having marks more than 70 they'll be put in the third cluster right so we can make the group isn't it so what you do there is partition and observations into k clusters what we have done with the example that is 60 students that is n is equal to 60 and into how many clusters we have divided we have divided into three clusters fine so k will be equal to three okay so what we do is k means clustering aims to partition and observations into k clusters in which each observation belongs to the cluster in which what we can say is to the cluster with the nearest mean serving as a prototype of the cluster very simple thing is distance of the data with its mean is nearer right knee now that mean is centroid of cluster and you can say the mean of the data fine let us see what is there in this particular algorithm given k k means number of clusters which we want to make we know that for your class we have made three clusters three groups right so there the k is equal to three that is being specified in the problem statement and one way you can say that it is given but other way you can say that you are having the limitation that is whatever is specified k with that only we have to work right but that is what is the case fine okay so so given k the k means algorithm is implemented in four steps what are the steps 
partition objects into k non empty subsets in your class 60 students are there divide the data into three non empty subsets right three groups we want to create compute seed points as the centroids of the clusters of the current partitioning that means we'll have to consider the centroid or mean of the cluster and then after what we should do is assign each object to the cluster with the nearest mean let's say that we have considered the data right we are randomly dividing them into three parts say from your roll number your enrollment number we have we have divided say 20 students first 20 students will be there in group one second 20 students will be there in group two next 20 students will be there in group three right that is randomly we have divided but 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 then what we have to do is we have to find the mean mean of what are we getting the mean of your heights weights all those things no our coordinate is the marks right so we'll take the average or mean of the marks of those 20 students in group one in group two in group three what we'll do is we'll find the distance of each and every person's marks with the three centroids with whatever centroid it is nearer will move that person to that group right okay so we do that go back to the step two that is what we have to do is again find the centroid and then after find the mean then after find the near nearer mean and then after we'll assign the point the person to that particular group, right? Stop when assignment does not change. That is, what we are doing is, from your class, we have moved persons from, say, one group to other, two, two, three, three to one. That way we have moved. But when, when no movement is there, all are there in their perfect place should we move them no that means the algorithm is is finished its task that means we have to stop the stop the assignment right what assignment that is we are assigning say person to the group or you can say data to that particular cluster right that we will stop fine so for that we can say distance what we are saying is that nearer point to the centroid whichever point is nearer there we are putting the point in that particular cluster we are putting the point for that we are using the different distance formula for that we can say one is Euclidean distance. Say we are having two points or any two coordinates. Here we are considering x and y1. That is x and y. If you are having, say in real world, you can say not only these two coordinates, but we can be having more than that, right? Like for you, we can consider, say, marks in subject 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right typically six seven subjects are there so let us say that we are having say p x1 y1 is it only the case we are having many subjects but what we have to do is we have to find the euclidean distance right typically what we say about that if they are the more subjects what do we consider is we have to find the Euclidean distance that is always square root of sigma i is equal to 1 to n qi minus pi whole square. And this is the Euclidean distance or in 
normally as we have considered the two points we can see it as y1 minus y2 whole square plus x1 minus x2 whole square and take the root of it that is the euclidean distance between two points recall your point and distance finding formula for that there we were using this this is a euclidean distance that is find the distance between two points fine okay and one more distance which we'll be using for our subject that is manhattan distance how we can find that we can find that using this formula that is mode of y2 minus y1 plus mode of x2 minus x1 right so these are the two ways that is euclidean distance or you can say manhattan distance with that we can find the distance and if the distance is nearer we will move our point our data or person whatever we are talking of to that particular cluster fine 